Bom dia a todos e a todas. Eu me chamo Liz Schanke e sou a pessoa que está responsável do projeto da Noruega. Trabalho numa associação que se chama Associação Norueguesa de Províncias e Municípios, que corresponde à mesma organização em Portugal. Quero dizer que estou muito triste de não poder estar aqui em Lisboa, mas então fazer a apresentação por vídeo foi uma, provavelmente, a melhor solução. E vou fazer a minha apresentação em inglês. The first thing I'd like to say is that I find that this conciliation project between Portugal and Norway is a very good basis for mutual learning. There are things that Norway can learn from Portugal, and there are probably things that Portugal can learn from Norway. The Norwegian results when it comes to work-life balance seem to be relatively good. The two main indicators that is that we have a high birth rate. At the moment, it's almost two. It's 1.98 children per woman. And we have a high female participation in the workforce, 74%. These two, the combination of these two factors is a strong indicator of work-life balance. But we see that this process has taken a long time approximately 50 years, and that we still have a long list of challenges. And we have big geographic differences. You will hear from some of the Norwegian municipalities during this conference, and they present a part of Norway, the south of Norway, where these challenges are still quite big. So what we hope is that the process we have gone through when it comes to conciliation or work-life balance, may be relevant also for Portugal. I'd like to take one example of the process, and then I will take the kindergartens. When I was young, I worked as a journalist, and I remember interviewing a mayor in 1972 outside Oslo, who was saying that he saw no need for kindergartens whatsoever. Children should be at home with their mothers. When I got my daughter in 1982, there was no kindergarten. And in 1985, there was still no kindergarten. So with a group of friends, we constructed and ran a kindergarten. And it cost me 25% of my net salary till she started school. Alongside during this period, there has been a lot of research, pilot project, evaluation, increasingly high political commitment and will to make kindergartens an economic priority. And now from 2009, we see the key results. We have a Kindergarten Act which gives all children the right to kindergarten from one year old at a maximum price, approximately 10% of a net income. And the municipalities are given the responsibility to coordinate and to monitor the quality of all kindergartens in the municipality, private as well as public. So now almost all Norwegian children go to kindergarten. I'd like to underline that Kindergarten is a good example of the need to see work-life balance in a short perspective as well as in a long one. If we look at the short perspective, it's obvious that kindergartens are a very good solution for the parents. You know where your child is during the daytime, it's safe and sure. But if you look at the long-term perspective, it's also the best solution for children Kindergartens prepare them for learning, for future education, for future work, and future work-life balance. And this is especially important for children who come from underprivileged or understimulated families. So kindergarten is a long-term work-life balance uh, instrument and thus improves national competence, economy, and competitiveness in a long-term perspective. 
As Arne did in her presentation some moments ago, I'd like to go to some of the future challenges because they are enormous. It's not only conciliation for families with children. At the moment, we see conciliation for families with elderly family members. That can be quite a challenge. And then you have the new conciliation for elderly workers. A high percentage of people in Norway over 60 are working. They need a kind of work-life balance. Maybe working 80% or 60% or other measurements. We have a part-time problem. 40% of women in Norway approximately work part-time, which means, of course, that they earn less and that their salary is less and their pension is less. We have the stereotypic choices of education and work that Arne mentioned. And we have what you could call the domestic gap. Women work a pro average of four hours a day in the home, men 2.5 hours. A gap of 1.5 hours. We have the after-school care challenge. Even if it's solved for kindergartens, we have not solved it when it comes to after-school care. Parents who work full-time need after-school care. There is not enough places and it's too expensive. And then we have the general challenge which is found in all countries, domestic violence. So we have come a certain way and we have still a long way to go. And we are sure that in this process in the future, we can learn from other countries, probably also from Portugal. Thanks for your attention.